everyone. How are you today? Just fine. I want you to be positive. How are you today? I'm hot too, but you know what? It doesn't matter because what does matter is staying positive and focusing on what's good in life. What's good for me? Seeing all of you guys coming here. I know that there's some few people or a lot of people that have left because it's too hot. Sorry about that. There's nothing I can do about that. I found out an hour before you all came that the air conditioner was broken. But I promise you, well, I can't promise you, but I'll do my best to make sure that the government fixes it for next month. So some of you are standing there going, who is this guy? None of you or some of you probably have never heard of me. As Glenn said, Glenn and I were the first two people to start the idea exchange. And in four short months, it's grown into this amazing thing that I never would have imagined would have happened. And there's a story that is the cause of the idea exchange creation. And that's what I wanted to share with you guys today. So my title or my topic is staying positive. Because really, if we're not positive, then what are we? Nobody wants to be around a negative person, right? If I was up here going, man, it's really hot. I don't know why any of you guys came out here. I don't even want to be here, right? You're going to stop listening to me and you're going to start looking at your phones, which I see some people are already doing. You. Yeah, and you. There's a girl right there. So I majored in psychology. And what I learned in psychology was your brain is extremely powerful. It's so powerful that you can create images in your mind that come out in front of you and you don't even, you know, realize that it's not real. Those are called hallucinations. Your brain can do anything. You can jump over buildings if you want. You can jump from the stage and not even feel the pain, even though you've probably hurt your leg. What matters is that you can control your brain. You can set your mood. And by doing so, you can set the mood of those around you. Because like I said before, if you are positive, people want to be around you because you can make people fear things. It's easy to make someone feel happy or to make them feel sad or to make them feel angry just by your own emotions, just by the way that you represent yourself. As Sebastian was saying earlier, your personal branding. And so what I try to do is be a positive person. I try to use my brain to create this positive atmosphere. And I hope that you guys can see that and feel that. And I hope you enjoy it because it's not easy to do. So in order to change yourself to be a more positive person, you first have to start with your brain. You have to start with your mindset. If you wake up in the morning and you're hot and sweating, you're not going to be very happy. But it's okay because as long as you find something good in every negative experience, number three, sorry I'm skipping around, then it's not a problem because you might be hot and you think, well, at least I have a bed to sleep in. There's probably somebody that's just stepped on a park bench. So it's about finding your happiness. Taking a picture of this is not going to make you a happier person. So don't take a picture of it. Do it. Live it. Breathe it. Yeah? So the second most important thing is find out who's making you unhappy and stop talking to them. It's actually really, really difficult to do. I personally have friends that I've known in China for six years, and I left a city to get away from them. And it was really hard, but my life in Shenzhen is a lot better, a lot happier being away from Wuhan and being away from them. And the last thing is begin doing things that make you happy. What makes me happy? Idea exchange makes me happy. And I'll tell you a secret. I spend 50 hours a week planning this event each month and I don't make anything for it other than my own happiness of seeing everybody here. So what's the story? How did Idea Exchange begin? Well, about seven months ago, I was in Panama. I went back to America to apply for a new work visa for my new company. And I decided to go to Panama with my brother because I never get to see him. He lives in America. And so we said, let's go to Panama. We've lived next to Central America our whole lives and that we've never even been there. So this is a picture of a beach in Panama. It's really beautiful, right? Don't you wish you could grab in? Well, you probably won't, but that's okay because you can keep the image in your mind and imagine it, and that will make you happier just in itself. 
So what happened in Panama that changed my life? Well, one day I decided to go for a bike ride, and that is the bike that I used, just so you can understand. I went, I was in an island in the Caribbean, and I was riding a bicycle, and I came to a very steep hill that was about this, of an incline, very, very steep hill. You can see that there's no brakes on that bicycle. And well, I went so fast, I lost control. I went over the bicycle, I hit my head on the ground, I blacked out, and the bicycle flew off the side of the road. About 30 minutes, uh, 30 seconds to a minute later, I woke up, had no idea what happened, and I could just tell, I couldn't see anything. My glasses had flown off, they'd flown to the side of the road, couldn't find them. Um, I'd flown into kind of some brush, so I'd gotten a lot of scrapes on my shoulders and everywhere. And uh, the worst part was a big gash in my head. And I was freaking out because I touched it and it was like really large. I didn't know what was going on. I thought like something that lodged in my head, I didn't know what was going on. I was freaking out. And I started getting blood in my eyes. I don't want to share that part, but there you go. You can see it. <laughs> it was really, really bad. So I went to the doctor in this little village in the island and he said, I have a concussion. Who knows what a concussion is? Like four people. Okay, if I say it in Chinese, you'll probably all understand. Um, 我脑子简单了,长简单了. Do you understand now? Yes. So, I went to a doctor in Panama. I went to two doctors in Costa Rica. I went to two doctors in America. I went to three doctors in China. They all said I had a concussion. For those of you who don't know what a concussion is, it's when you hit your head so hard that your brain literally smacks itself against the side of your skull. It's not a pretty thing. So I went back to America. I, I, before I came back to China, I had to go back to America where I was applying for my new work visa. I got the concussion. I was miserable. I couldn't do anything. I was sleeping all the time. I, I just literally, I couldn't see straight. I got headaches. I was dizzy. Everything was just really, really horrible. I was really depressed. My parents wanted me to stay in America until I got healthy, but I did a lot of research and the research told me that it could take years to feel healthy again. And I did not want to leave my life in China just because of a concussion. So even though my parents, those are my mom, that's my mom and dad, just because my parents said, stay here until you get healthy, didn't stop me from coming back to China because that's where my life was and that's where I wanted to be. So three weeks after my concussion, I flew on a plane for 25 hours, not very smart of me, but I did it anyways because I wanted to. And I came back to China where I was alone. I forgot to mention that two days before I flew back to China, I was fired from my company, the one that provided me that work visa. You can ask me that later. So I have a visa for a job that I don't have and a flight to go back to a country where I don't know why I'm going back. I don't have a life there. At that time, I'd only been in Shenzhen for four or five months, six months. I didn't have any friends. I didn't have any social activities. I didn't have anything. So why was I going back? I went back because it was still a better, happy, it was still a happier life for me than being back in America or being in Wuhan. And I was alone. I didn't have a girlfriend. I didn't have a job. I couldn't work. I just slept. I was depressed. Everything sucked. And nobody believed me. Nobody thought the pain was real. Nobody trusted me. And that made it worse. Well, whoops. I decided that the only way I could get healthy again was to take my life into my own hands. So I started thinking not about how much pain I was in, but rather how amazing I was going to feel and how much, how different I was going to lead my life after an injury like that. Because what I realized was you can be healthy for as long as you are, but once you lose that health, it's very hard to get it back. So what's the best way to stay healthy? Do everything you can to remain healthy. So I started walking. I got out of the house. I got back into society. I started walking. It's the mountain behind my house. And things started looking up. I started feeling better. I started feeling healthier. And then I met Glenn. And Glenn was talking about doing this thing called label exchange. And I said, hey, dude, that sounds really cool. I'm really passionate about this. I think it's great. People should share their ideas. Why don't we do this together? I would love to help you. And he said, fantastic. Let's do it. So... We did, and this was the result of our first event. I don't have the other pictures to show you now, but basically, 
for those of you who've only really heard about us in the last few weeks, we're only four months old. In the first month, we worked really hard to find the speakers and to find the venue. Everything was very, very difficult. We had no support whatsoever. We went to the room that could fit 50 people, and they thought maybe 20 will show. A hundred people showed up. A hundred. And we didn't do any marketing. No, we didn't spend any money on advertising or anything. It was incredible, the, the result that we had. And it inspired me to continue going, even though Glenn was busy doing his other things and, and working. So I decided to take over. So really, it came from my desire to do something with my life, to do something that makes me happy. And then meeting him, it was just like fate. We were meant to meet at that time because he was going to give me the key to change my life and make me happy again, or to make me happier than I was before my accident. Because after that accident, I've never been the same person. And you know what? I'm okay with that. I'm proud. I'm happy because of that. Because the person I am now is better than the person I was before. And I love myself a lot more now. At the same time, you probably have seen this girl, Lisa. Around the same time that I met Glenn, I met this beautiful, amazing, sweet, intelligent girl named Lisa. Lisa is the co-founder of the Idea Exchange. She has been an amazing help to me, and she's also my girlfriend and business partner. <laughs> yes. And I don't even see her. Lisa, are you in? No. She's... Oh, there you are. Okay. Thank you for listening to my talk, sweetie. So, I think all of the speakers have really shared something that I'm also trying to share, and that is human connection. Before Lisa, I was single for five years. I tried desperately to meet women and try to find my love. And it wasn't until my accident, after my accident, that I started to look at life differently. And it was only then that I met Lisa. And Lisa has changed my life as well. Because without her, the idea exchange wouldn't exist either. Because she was there. We met two weeks before the first idea exchange and she was there with me. She watched. And then I said, how great is this? And she said, it's awesome. I said, great. I want you to do it with me. And she said, okay, let's do it together. And if it weren't for her, I wouldn't be here right now. And the idea exchange wouldn't be here right now either. So changing your mindset, changing your attitude, finding people that make you happy and finding things that make you happy are the most important things in life. After Glenn stepped back, we did our second event and that was the result. We had no, we had volunteers. You know, uh, there's a guy, Jason with curly hair. He was a speaker at our first event. He became an, an active volunteer in our second, third, fourth event. And some of the speakers that were, were in the audience before, Kaiser was actually a, uh, an audience member at our last event. And who else? Anthony is actually a very big part of AD Exchange as well. And I met him two months ago and he was a speaker at the first event that he took part in. So the Idea Exchange has created a community for me. It has created a support network of people who are loving and caring and sweet and generous and want to give back to their community and want to be part of something bigger than just ourselves. They want to be part of reshaping our society and reshaping the way we think and act and behave to our, towards ourselves and to others. This was the last event that we did. You can see Anthony is there, Lisa is there, Cherry was a speaker. Cherry was a person who was at, um, at the second event to, to participate, and then she was a speaker at the last event. And Glenn, again, you can see as well. And so really the point I'm trying to get across to you is, wake up. Don't wake up, go to work, go home, sleep. Wake up. Live your life. Think about what makes you happy. Think about if you're happy now, because if you're not happy, you will never be happy unless you make yourself happy. If you don't like your job, find the thing that's going to make you happy, quit your job, and go start doing it. I have not worked, since I had my concussion, I have not worked for another person in almost eight months. I've been my own boss. And some of you wonder how we put these events on. We live on our savings from my last job. Okay. But I don't care that I'm spending my own money because what makes me happy is doing the idea exchange. What makes me happy is living happy every day. And our lives are so short that I would rather live 
so that what people are going to say about me after I die than for that little piece of paper that gets me another job. Will you be the next to speak? Only you can apply. Thank you.